The inverted Jenny is the world's most famous stamp, and for its size and weight, one of the world's most valuable objects. Ever since the sheet of 100 inverted jennies was sold to a lucky stamp collector in 1918, the image of the upside-down airplane has inspired generations of collectors who hope that they too might walk into the post office and buy stamp errors worth a fortune. How the inverted jenny came to be is one of Philately's great stories, and as each stamp passes from owner to owner, the stories continue to be written. But our story of the jenny begins in 1918. The early years of the 20th century were filled with change and with conflict. The sound of the horse and buggy on city streets now competed with the sound of the Model T, which rolled off Ford's assembly line by the hundreds of thousands. Women marched for the right to vote, pushing Congress to finally pass the 19th Amendment. The Bolshevik Revolution in Russia brought communists to power, and World War I ushered in a frightening technological advancement in warfare. By Armistice Day in November 1918, more than 100,000 American soldiers died in the war. Many of them were not killed in combat, but died from the Spanish flu, which filled army hospitals with infected soldiers. At home, fear of the flu caused mail carriers to wear masks. Despite the grim realities of war and disease, postal officials were working on an exciting new way to carry the mails. They would call it airmail. The new airmail service was inaugurated on May 15, 1918. The Army provided specially modified Curtis biplanes. The model number JN-4 is what gave the fighting aircraft its nickname, Jenny. Two of the planes were scheduled to leave simultaneously from New York and Washington, D.C., each stopping at Philadelphia, the third city on the new airmail route. The Army supervised the project, and Captain Benjamin Lipsner was there to see the first flight take off from Washington. President Woodrow Wilson, postal officials, and other dignitaries attended the ceremony. The pilot on the first flight out of Washington was Lieutenant George Boyle, who had very little flying experience, but was added to the roster of pilots because of family connections. Lieutenant Boyle took off, cleared the trees, and then headed south in the wrong direction. After crash landing his Jenny on a farm in Maryland, the mail Boyle carried was put on a train bound for Philadelphia. During the month before the May 15th inaugural flight, officials at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing were frantically trying to prepare a special stamp for the new 24 cent airmail rate. The Bureau's chief stamp designer, Claire Aubrey Houston, was assigned the task of creating a distinctive bi-colored design. The vignette, the central part of the stamp, was engraved by one of the Bureau's most talented artists, Marcus Baldwin. It was Baldwin who engraved the vignette on the 1893 Trans-Mississippi One Dollar, considered by many to be the most beautiful American stamp ever issued. Baldwin's vignette was a precise rendering of the Curtis Jenny plane. By pure coincidence, the photo provided to Baldwin showed the first plane to take off from Washington with serial number 38262. At the time the stamp was created, no one could have known this would be the first plane to leave Washington. The post office asked the Bureau to print the stamps in two colors, creating a patriotic red, white, and blue design during this time of war. To accomplish the difficult task of aligning two colors on each sheet of stamps, the Bureau used the so-called spider printing press. The first pass produced sheets with 100 of the red frames. The stack of sheets was set aside, and then the vignette plate was put on the press for the second pass, producing the blue vignettes. The final printed sheets were gummed and perforated, and they were also trimmed along the top and the right to make them the correct size for distribution. The entire process involved several steps, and there was always the chance for human error. This potential was very much on the mind of a Washington, D.C. stamp collector before the stamps went on sale.
William T. Roby was a modest but enthusiastic stamp collector during the war. He was familiar with the bicolored inverts of the 1901 Pan American issue, and on May 10th, just days before the Jenny stamps went on sale, Roby wrote to a friend and fellow stamp collector, telling him that it might pay to be on the lookout for inverts. Roby was 29 years old and working as a cashier for a Washington, D.C. company. His office was near the New York Avenue branch post office. The stamps had officially been released on May 13th, but they were not available at the branch offices until the next day. On the morning of May 14th, Roby withdrew $30 from his bank account and proceeded to the post office counter, where he laid down $24 for a sheet of the new airmail stamp. When the clerk produced the sheet, Roby immediately realized that he had just won the philatelic lottery. Gazing at the inverts, Roby said, My heart stood still. When later questioned by embarrassed postal officials, the clerk who sold the inverted jennies defended himself, saying, How was I to know the thing was upside down? I never saw a plane before. Roby spent several days trying to find a buyer for his inverted jenny sheet, and in the end it was a dealer named Eugene Klein who brokered the deal. On May 20th, Klein confirmed the deal to buy Roby's sheet for $15,000, a fantastic sum of money at the time. Klein had already arranged to sell the sheet to the wildly eccentric collector, Edward H.R. Green. The colonel, as he was called, came from an enormously wealthy New England family. His mother was the notorious Hetty Green, whose great wealth, ruthless business tactics, and miserly ways earned her the title, the Witch of Wall Street. Her 300-pound son had a prosthetic leg because she refused to get him proper medical care after an accident. When Hetty died in 1916, her estate was worth $100 million. With his inherited wealth and his mother dead, Colonel Green embarked on an uninhibited shopping spree, spending $3 million a year on diamonds, stamps, coins, pornographic literature, and trinkets for his female companions. He was also free to marry Mabel, a Texas redhead who met Colonel Green when she was a paid escort. The colonel had one of his prized inverted jennies put into a locket for Mabel. As for the other inverted jennies, the sheet was divided into singles and blocks and sold by Klein to collectors and dealers around the world. When Colonel Green's stamp collection was sold at auction in the 1940s, a total of 38 inverted jennies entered the market. Over the years, philatelists have kept photo records of each inverted jenny in the original sheet. All but a few of the 100 in existence have been seen and photographed. The most valuable item from the sheet is the block of four with the blue plate number. On a normal sheet from the first printing, the numbers at the top would have been trimmed away. However, because the blue color was inverted, the number was printed in the bottom sheet margin. This unique plate block sold for nearly $3 million in a 2005 Siegel auction, the highest price ever paid at auction for a United States philatelic item. The plate block and four other inverted Jenny blocks were once part of the B.D. Phillips collection, a vast holding which was sold privately in 1968 for $4 million. The Phillips inventory also lists a block of four purchased in 1959, which came from the daughter of Eugene Klein. This block from the fifth and sixth rows is the piece Klein bought for himself when he broke up the sheet for Colonel Green. The Klein block was kept in a vault from 1918 to 1959 and traded hands only twice until the early 1970s when a collector had it divided into four singles for each of his heirs. Because the stamps in this block were handled so infrequently since 1918, they are exceptionally well preserved, with bright fresh colors on the printed side, crisp white paper, and only a light trace of one previous hinge on the gum. Position 58 from the block realized $577,500 in a 2005 Siegel auction, the highest price ever paid for a single inverted Jenny. Position 57, the stamp immediately to the left in the sheet, will be offered at auction by Siegel Auction Galleries on November 14th. 
A full color catalog can be downloaded at SiegelAuctions.com. Bidders may participate in person, by telephone, through agents, or using our live internet bidding system, which allows you to bid during the live auction from your computer. To learn more, go to SiegelAuctions.com and click on Live Internet Bidding. Robert A. Siegel Auction Galleries has been in business continuously since 1930, and we sell more United States stamps than any other auction firm anywhere in the world. If you have a collection for sale, please contact us at 212-753-6421. Our experts will tell you what your stamps are worth and how you can get the best price for them. 212-753-6421. 